Trossard's VTR for it. Double four, part one, take one. I do not understand what has made you cancel our marriage tomorrow. But I have told you, Paul. And you knew before I told you. I love Doug, and if I married you, it would be only a marriage of convenience. Well, then nothing has changed. That's all it could be, and that's all it can be. Where's the difference? The difference is that once I was willing to make use of you, and now I'm not willing to. So you're going back to Poland? I shall have to. Abandoning your love for Douglas as well as your wedding to me? Well, it is your love that prevents our marriage. Can you not see that? If, if you didn't love me, if, if you were a stranger, even paid to marry me, then it would be easy for me to go through the ceremony. Because it would not be a real ceremony. It would mean nothing to either of us and could hurt. Neither of us. Paid. What paid? Well, you said if I were paid to marry you. Well, you must know that foreign girls do pay Englishmen to marry them so they can stay in the country and work here. Sometimes they see the man just the day before the ceremony and afterwards he walks one way, she another. Yes, I've heard of such cases. A pair of them always get found out by the Home Office. A girl is sent home and the man is prosecuted for conspiring against immigration laws. Perhaps I am lucky that I have no time to find a stranger. And also it would be too expensive. I have very little money. Then you're left only with me. But, Paul, for you it would be a real wedding. No. Not unless you wished it to be, if you ever did. So you are saying that... You love me so much that you would marry me, then divorce me when I need it to, and then let me go to the arms of another man? Because I love you so much, yes, that's what I'm saying. But, but it would be hopeless for you. Why? Because you're prepared to wait for Douglas's love indefinitely? Yes. And you must understand that. And you must understand that I am prepared to wait for your love indefinitely. Would it not be cruel to refuse me such a chance? To wait and wait and wait without hope? There would be no hope unless I was prepared to wait. Both of us need this marriage, Anna. You so that you can wait for Douglas and I so that I can wait for you. I am prepared to help you. Are you prepared to help me? If you do not trust me, just say no. But if you do trust me, never to make it more than a marriage of convenience unless you wish me to. Never to overstep the mark and say yes. I have always trusted you, Paul. Well, then, until the registrar marries us in the morning, good night, Anna. Yes. Until then. Good night, Bob. Where is everybody this morning? Oh, they'll soon be down. Don't worry, kid. When the smell of that bacon wafts up into their nostrils, you'll be a stampede here. There's an Arab in here. An Arab is going to pay 1.7 million for a brood mare. Well, you aren't going, Arbs. Morning. You're Morning. taking your time this morning, aren't you? Sorry? 1.7 million. And where on earth is Benny? He's gone. Gone where? Out. Without any breakfast? He's been up since 6.30. Tell him a lot of money, you know. What's his game, any out? I don't know, mate. He's gone very quiet, even for him. They are spending money them, I suppose. It's a shame I was born a calf, isn't it? Shame you was born at all. All right, nice, isn't it? Oh, thank you, mate. Good morning, Mr. McGuire. I'm just dishing up. Uh, good morning. Good morning. And perhaps you'd be so kind as to pop mine in the oven for a few moments. Well, yes, I can do. Why? What's the matter? 
Oh, I wonder if you could oblige me with a little scouring powder, the hand basin in the bathroom. What's wrong with it? A bit of a rim, a bit of a tide mark, as you might say. You were last in there, weren't you? Yeah, but I mean, How often have I got to tell you? Yeah, well, listen, Pat, I You mean... cleaned that basin thoroughly. There's others in the house besides you, you know. Oh, look, I didn't mean to start any Leave trouble. this to me, Mr Maguire. I make the rules. I like to see them enforced. See to it. Well, now. Now. I'll do it. Mr Maguire, let Sydney do it. You sit down and have your breakfast. If anyone's bacon is going to dry up, let it be his. After all, he is in the rung. You haven't got 1.7 million to lend me, have you? What? I want to buy myself out. Good morning, Anna. Oh, good morning, Mr. Bowler. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Anna. Uh, I understand Paul has taken the day off, so it's quite in order for the bride to go into breakfast because the groom won't be present. Well, this, of course, will be my last breakfast. Good heavens. You make the wedding sound like an execution. No, I meant as I'm going to be married to a member of the staff. Restaurant will be forbidden for me. Ah, yes. Barbara, after what you said to me last night, I realized you were right, and I told him the truth. And even so, he uh, still wants to marry you, yeah? Yes, even so. And I think he would be very disappointed if you were not at the ceremony. What truth was it she told him? Well, enough to make most men uh, go off the idea of marriage. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. You mean she told Paul that she loves your brother? Well, this answers the great question. Hmm? Where the happy couple will spend their wedding night. Oh, well, well, then. Aren't they having a honeymoon? Ah, oh, no. He is aware that we are extremely busy and will take only the day off, off for the ceremony. The honeymoon, he says, can come later during his normal leave. David would have stretched a point, even if only for a week. Oh, what's yours? Another memo. As of today, Miss Radek, he says, will sever her connections with the Polish Embassy and therefore will cease to be in its pay. Her Shally account should no longer be sent to the Embassy, but to Paul himself. Well, mm. questions of etiquette and protocol abound this morning. I mean, on the one hand, is Paul entitled to a cut rate as a member of staff? And on the other hand, is he entitled, again as a member of staff, to lodge his wife in the public quarters at all. Oh dear, this is all beginning to sound rather wretched. Next, we'll get a memo from the gloomy groom saying that he understands his wife can no longer eat in the restaurant. No memo from Paul, I suppose, saying that he won't use his staff bedroom tonight. Is there? Mm, none that I have found. It's clearly going to be too small for the two of them, isn't it? Is it? Well, obviously, they'll have to use her chalet tonight. You know, the more I hear about this wedding, the less obvious anything about it seems to be. Bit of a song and dance, all that, wasn't it? He had every right. Oh, listen, kid, I mean, it's just a few shaving hairs in the basin. One would sort of swell them away. Not call for the hygiene inspector. Just don't do it again, and I'm waiting for that plate. All right, kid, I'm trying to watch my manners tonight, kid. <sighs> See what I mean? That Maguire gets the knife in every chance, mate. That's his 40. Spent a lifetime perfecting it. Why don't you just ride it, mate? Oh, I'll ride it, don't worry. Now the battle lines have been drawn. But fancy having to come down to that every morning with him sitting here watching you. Attention! I think I'll go and get the car run. What do you mean, around where? It's around the corner. Well, why ain't it outside? Because there was no room. Have I taken your space? I'm sorry about that. Oh, it's no sweat. Shan't happen again. Well, first come, first serve, mate. Just remember you were here first, sunshine. Serves a good breakfast, your wife, Hooper. Yeah. Tips not included. All gratuities gratefully received. Runs a first class establishment, too. Considering her handicap. Maybe I haven't got a handicap. <laughs> she has you. Oh, very droll, I must say. Time you weren't here. Okay. Every time I say goodbye, I die a little, mate. There's your plate, as new. You can serve the breakfast straight onto that in the morning. No one would know the difference. Except Sherlock Holmes here with his magnifying glass, because he's a stickler for detail, isn't he? Anyway. Oh. Bit of dust on there, Squire. Wouldn't want you to get put on a fizzer. What would you do with him? I wouldn't know that, Mrs Hooper. But I'm tempted to venture. You'd do better without him. Paul, it's good of you to come, considering it's your wedding day. Your note asks for two minutes. Ten seconds have gone. Well, let's tuck ourselves away in there, shall we? Um, 
Anna's having breakfast, and she might be out at any moment. It's unlucky to see each other before the ceremony. <laughs> Sit down, please. <clears throat> Paul, I was hoping that you had embarked on this marriage in order to help me with that deal that I proposed to you, to try and get Miranda to break off her engagement to Brady. J. Henry, please understand this. I never even considered accepting your bribe. Even so, I cannot understand how on earth I could help you against Brady by marrying Anna. Because without the marriage, Anna would have to go to Poland eventually. As long as she remains here, anything might happen between her and Brady. And Miranda could find out, and in time, to break off her engagement. Uh, Paul, you are marrying for love. Yes. And knowing what we both know, do you think Anna is marrying for love? Yes. Love of you, or love of Brady? God's sake. Yes, she's using you, Paul, and you know it. However, I want Anna Radek here, not in Poland. But tell me, do you think you can keep her here? I mean, do you realize the difficulties that lie ahead for you? For a start, how long do you think you can uh, meet the bills for her chalet? Yes, well, we're getting a flat. Well, provided that, that it's within walking distance of the motel, I shall help you with that. No, I don't need your help, J. Henry. Well, she'd be grateful. And the closer she is to Brady, the happier she'll be. Are you trying to stop me from marrying Anna? Paul, if I thought for one moment that it would make Miranda realize the truth and get rid of Brady, yes, I would. Well, then why have you simply never asked your daughter or told her of your suspicions yourself? Because it would be useless without hard proof. No, J. Henry, that's not the reason. It would be useless because your daughter spent her entire young life learning never to trust you. Oh, Paul. Paul. Already you need to convince yourself that Anna and Brady never made love. That it's just another of my suspicions. No, I'm sorry for you. I really am. Because, you see, the truth will never leave you. No matter how fast you run. Bridal party assembling in the bar. Mm, in just a few minutes. Celebration here afterwards. Uh, sort of. It's a bit awkward, really. Paul didn't want any fuss, but Jill got an attack of the romantics. <laughs> so she had Adam are giving them dinner in town afterwards. Barbara and I would go, but can't. Has Miranda been asked, do you know? I haven't heard now. Well, I must uh, winch my car out of the car park. Well, it's bumper to bumper with mine, so no dents, please. You're looking lovely. Oh, thank you. You nervous? A little bit. Could you spare me a few moments in there? But I'm to meet hunters in there. Yes, I know, so we'll have to be quick. Is Douglas Brady going with the bridal party? Or is he going to the uh, registry office with the groom's party? No, I don't expect him to attend. He knows about the wedding, though. Well, I should think Miranda told him that. As a matter of fact, I did. He looked absolutely sick. What do you want to say to me? You are throwing yourself away on a gamble that sooner or later you'll be able to divorce Paul and go to Brady, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I will wait. But why wait? Go to him now. If he loves you, it'll come out. I mean, you're a woman. Use tears. Weep before him. Never mind who hears. Well, it seems Barbara had already got the car out and there are no dents. Oh, thank you. Well, cheer up. All brides are nervous at the last moment. Almost as much as the grooms. Hello, Kath. Kevin and Glenn to get off, all right? Oh, yes, thanks. Look, it's about Mr. Paul. Is he coming in tomorrow as usual? Why not? Well, he is getting married at this moment. And you're wondering if there's going to be a honeymoon? Actually not. Oh, just a quiet little wedding, then. Quietest ever. Practically inaudible. So he will be working here tomorrow, then? So it seems. Horribly unromantic, oh, isn't it? poor dears. And they've insisted on no wedding presents. Oh, well, I'm not having that. No? Well, certainly not. I mean, Mr. Paul's one of us, isn't he? I mean, he's family. <laughs> what a sweet thought. No, but he is, isn't he? And she's very pleasant to the staff. She's always so nice. It would be lovely, wouldn't it, if we could mark the occasion somehow? Let me be the first to put in a contribution. 
I knew you'd say that. Then why did you take so long to get me to say it? <laughs> Waiting for someone? No, just curious to see if anyone has survived the wedding. Don't tell me you disapprove. I feel very sorry for them both. Well, try and keep it to yourself, eh? Ah, oh, the survivors. Thank Welcome you. to the happy married couple. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Where is my husband? Well, he's putting the cars away so that I can take these two uh, straight into no, the... No, 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 no. Oh, yes. oh, 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 Good. They're back. Daddy, have you made plans for dinner this evening? Because Douglas thought it was about time we treated you to dinner. What does that mean? You agree or it is about time? Both. <laughs> Come on, let's go and splash champagne over the happy couple. Well, every Lovely. happiness. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much. All Cheers. happiness. Cheers. All happiness. Cheers. Now take this off at last. <laughs> My Listen, goodness. I've got an idea. Um, David, I know you and Barbara made plans for this evening, but why don't the rest of us entertain the bride and groom at dinner this evening? Oh, sure, oh, I believe, no, 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 I believe that Jill and Adam are booked a table in town. Oh. Yes. As, for, as a foursome. Yes. Well, we can make it a sevenson. Uh, you mean six. Six? Yes, yes. Anna, Paul, Jill, Adam, yourself and Jay Henry. And Douglas makes seven. But Douglas? No objection. No, my dear, no objection at all. I just wonder which of us men will be the life and soul of the party. Well, here's to seven for dinner. Such a lucky number, seven. Cheers. Yes, cheers, cheers, cheers. 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 No, no, I assure you, there's no need to involve Mr Chance. Um, if you can let us have it first thing. No, no, I haven't had the pleasure. My name's Maguire. Well, my friends call me Harry. <laughs> but for those of us that know him, eh, we call him a little... Leave it out, Sydney. I, um, I shall look forward to that. Good... Goodbye, Mrs. Philpott. <laughs> What's so funny, Hooper? I haven't had the pleasure, eh? Well, you soon will have, Squire. Everyone's had the pleasure there. We can do without your lewd remarks. Look, we can't start this first thing in the morning, because the starter motor's got a three-day delivery minimum. Three days? That's what the man said. Daphne and Harry. Got a ring about that, isn't it? Isn't it time you weren't here? I mean, normally you're like a greyhound waiting for the trap to open. Hello, well, I watch this. A secret betting man, eh? No, I'm not. You've got all the jargon off anyway, mate. Uh, I'm an all-round sportsman. Of course, of course. Bit of a sprinter, weren't you? Came third in the 4x100 into services relay. Beaten to second place by an RAF man with a limp. Anyway, tell you something. You better get your starting blocks nailed down behind there, because when Daphne Philpott gets hold of you, mate, you'll want to be out of here a bit sharpish. Otherwise, it'll be down to two falls and a submission. Come on, let's go and have the drink. Come you come in. I have some work to get through. Oh, bugging in the overtime, eh? When I do a job, Hooper, I do it properly. I see it through. Uh -huh. This lot will take me half an hour to clear. And not that it's any business of yours, but I do not book myself any overtime. Oh. Well, just hope that's not catching, eh? Because when we work, we get paid. When you work, Hooper, we'll sell tickets. Let's get out of here. We shouldn't have gone. I said so. We shouldn't have gone. It was terrible for Dak to... Mr. and Mrs. Ross. Who? Oh? oh, please, don't open it. I mean, the bottle. It's from the staff. Wishing us happiness. Mrs. Brown would have signed, of course. Miranda's name is the first. Miranda. Miranda. Well, I did say it wouldn't be a proper marriage, unless you wished it to be. Well, we shall sleep in this room, Paul. I normally read a little before going to sleep. Mm -hmm. Would that keep you awake? No, of course not. I, I drop off very quick. Huh? Do you uh, normally sleep in that bed? This one. Right. Well, then I shall sleep in this one. Mm-hmm. Just imagine there is a wall between us. 
wouldn't be very far from the truth either.